So this morning, we're really looking at trust. <coughs> trust. And I've kind of been touching on it a little bit. Last week, I mentioned about how sometimes we've trusted people and we've put our lives in the hands of people in some cases that we didn't even know. In some cases, we knew that they were wasted out of their mind and yet we might have got in a vehicle with them. So we've trusted a lot, <coughs> misguided. You know, you see again, you know, people that are overdosing. In, in most cases, it's usually people that really aren't in, an, in a full-blown heroin addiction, let's say, because it's usually somebody that might do it here or there and they don't know what they're doing. And they, 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 they take a, a drug and they really don't know what it is and inject it into their body. And it kills them. Have we not done, I mean, each one of us here, I'm sure, if you think in your head, you can identify with this. Whether it's sticking a needle in your arm or going to a place where you know you could be killed. Right? I'm pretty sure. I, I know I have. So we have trusted in the past, misguided. And in this morning's scripture, which was just read, there's a portion of that scripture that is very telling. See, because we've been lied to. <coughs> but God is not a man that he should lie. So we can't equate God with man. So here we go. Lies, lies, lies. Everything's been a lie. We tell lies and we get lied to. In an act of addiction, that's what happens. You know, the whole world is, you know, who do you trust? What do you believe? So even though we've come out of an act of addiction, there's still going to be things that we should question. <laughs> right, whether or not they're truth. Well, what's good is we have this to go by. So if we're seeking help and somebody is telling us then how to go about being helped or, or receiving that help, really we can look here as a reference to make sure that it's in line with God's will. But it comes again back to that whole being honest with ourselves. Right? We rationalize and justify behaviors. We lie to ourselves and we say, well, as long as I'm no, not doing this, I can get away with this. It's not as bad. I, you know, I look back at my life of, of you know, I started out, I, I think the, the first thing I remember stealing was I thought it was a box of candy cigarettes. And I took it and put it in, you know, the hoodies with the full pocket thing here in the middle. And I walked in the front door and that pocket thing had a big hole in it. And my mother looked at me and says, what do you have? And she pulls out and it was a carton of, uh, what are they, the little cigarettes with no filters. Not cam it wasn't camels. With the round, round thing? Lucky strikes? Lucky strikes! <laughs> I remember the round thing. So, I had stolen, and I, I was probably five, four or five, a carton of cigarettes. My mother right away thought my brother put me up to it, but... No, it was just me trying to get candy cigarettes. But it starts out, you know, and then I went through life, and. And you know, I stole cars and, and I would say, well, it's a junky old car. So it wouldn't really, nobody really miss it. But then the cars got nicer. You know, and I, I break into stores and, and I say, well, at least I'm not holding up anybody with a gun. See, you see the progression? I, I, I'm not gonna go further with that, but we start out with these little lies that we tell ourselves. And lies always grow. They always grow. And we continue to talk ourselves into things. And it progresses. So, do we justify our actions?
actions, we know we're wrong, we rationalize behaviors that we know we need to change. Okay, here we are in recovery. We know these things. We are praying to God for his guidance. He's giving us guidance. We know we shouldn't do something, but yet we talk ourselves into doing it. But why? You know, for some people, it's just they don't care anymore. Or we think that we're not capable. You know, we can't trust ourselves, and so we might as well just go ahead and do it anyway. So, here we are. What is truth? So we, we, need, we need to, you know, trust and obey, because there's no other way. How do we trust? How do we start? Who do we trust? What do we believe? Again, this is truth. This is the manual. As I said again uh, last week, I, I, you know, what did Jesus do when he was tempted? In the desert. Every response that he gave to Satan came from here. Came from God's word. So we need to be in it too. Or we're not going to know what truth is. Who can we trust? Well, again, we have to have a sponsor. We have to have a counselor. We have to have a support group. And I was just talking to somebody the other night, and admittedly, she wasn't happy with her sponsor because she wanted to come into a relationship, and her sponsor said, whoa, slow down. So what did she do? <laughs> Found a new sponsor. We look for people to rubber stamp our mess, do we not? instead of looking for people to hold us accountable. Except we, we look for people that, that will understand why we still do the things we do instead of telling us the truth. So we can trust because God puts people in our lives. So we can trust people, but we have to make sure, again, See this, that Bible there, right? That's what it all comes back to. We have to find people that we can trust, that are in God's word, that know God's word, and live it. Not only know it, right? Trust and believe that it's real and true, but are obedient. Hmm. So how can we trust when it seems like we've never had someone in our lives that has completely been trustworthy. Well, again, God is not a man that he should lie. How many times have we put our trust in man only to be discouraged? We've been betrayed. And that, look, when, I, when, I, when you see man, right, we do all understand that this is all people, mankind, right? Okay. Because we've put our trust in women and been dissuaded, right? We've been betrayed as well. It doesn't help us any not being able to open up to someone because we're afraid of betrayal. And that's another big key to complete transformation, being able to purge all of the old mess from within. Having someone in our lives that we trust enough to share with our mouths those things that we've pushed down because they got to come up. Because if we keep pushing them down, it's serenity now, right? Anybody know what that is? Serenity now! You're not going to get serenity by pushing things down. Doesn't help us any, right? And, and it seems it might seem hopeless. It, it may. And, and even after we've come into a, a, you know, this relationship with God and he's put people in our lives and we're talking to them, look, we're not God. We are men. And sometimes we still will come up short. But don't be discouraged. It is very discouraging that when we put our trust in someone else and they come up short. And that happens, remember, God is not a man that he should love. He is not a man that he should change his mind. 
always revert back <laughs> to the Creator. Seems hopeless. We've been victims and victimized those who were around us. And I don't know, we always talk about being totally open. I always, I know I always talk about being totally open, not holding anything back. The problem is that almost, it's almost impossible for us because of an issue that we have with trust. Never mind. I didn't open that one up. Anybody know what that is? Where's that? Wait, wait, how's this? I'll make it easy. So, again, re remember this? Okay. So, I can put on this, I used my tongue like a bow. I own it. All right, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 9. I want to open it up because there's also a bit of devotional that goes along with it that I'd like to read. 4, 6, 7. I'm almost there. 8, here we go. Jeremiah 9. My people bend their tongues like bows to shoot out lies. They refuse to stand up for the truth. They only go from bad to worse. They do not know me, says the Lord. Beware of your neighbor. Don't even trust your brother. For brothers take advantage of brother. And friend slanders friend. They all fool and defraud each other. No one tells the truth. With practiced, listen, with practiced tongues, they tell lies. They wear themselves out with all their sinning. Okay, listen, I just gotta, I gotta stop there for a second because, again, this reminds me, this reminds me of sitting in a meeting, sitting there trying to think of the words that I wanna say. Do we really sit there and practice? Is there truth when we practice the words that we're going to use? I'd say there can be, but most of the times when we're sitting there going through things in our head, maybe we twist things so that they might sound better or make us look better, make us sound smarter, even though we're not talking about the real problem. Anyway, I just had to stop there because it came into my, my mind. They pile lie upon lie. They utterly refuse to acknowledge me, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. See, I will melt them down in a crucible and test them like metal. What else can I do with my people? For their tongues shoot lies like poison arrows. They speak friendly words to their neighbors while scheming in their heart to kill them. Should I not punish them for this, says the Lord? Should I not <clears throat> avenge myself against such a nation? Now, let me read this. It's, it's on honesty, right? Trust, right? But it's about honesty. It's about us being honest. Most of us know the pain caused by deceit, both for the deceiver and for the one who has been betrayed. We may be trying to learn to trust again after living in a situation in which we haven't been given any reason to trust. David cried out, Help! <laughs> Help, O Lord. Anybody remember that? Help! Help, O Lord, for the godly are fast and severe. The faithful, oh boy, today's world. The faithful have vanished from the earth. Neighbors lie to each other, speaking with flattering lips and deceitful hearts. May the Lord cut off their flattering, flattering lips in silence. 
their boastful tongues. They say, we will lie to our heart's content. Our lips are our own. Who can stop us? And that's from Psalm 12, verse 4. <coughs> Jeremiah prophesied, beware of your neighbor. Don't even trust your brother, for your brother takes advantage. Brother takes advantage of brother, and friend slanders a friend. When we turn our life over to God, learning to trust Him is a process. He understands that this will be hard, but God is absolutely trustworthy. We should be cautious, however, as we put our trust in people, trusting only those who have proven themselves trustworthy. And again, it's making sure that they are in line with with God's word. We, we know that if we're in God's word and someone gives us instruction or tells us that we should do something and it's not in line with God's word, then we should find somebody else to trust. It's as simple as that. Okay, so, good thing there's someone that we can trust. See, Numbers 23, 19 says what? What does it say there? Sometimes we try to put them in a box like one. We try to figure them out. We try to think of them as people that we've dealt with, people that we know. You know I always, there's certain people in my life that I look up to, okay? And I remember going to some person that I really looked up to as being a man of faith. And, uh, when I was in, still in training school and seminary. And I said something to him about it. I said, you know, you're, you're a very holy man. And it was interesting. And he said, well, only God knows my heart. It's a weird kind of response. And it took me a while to figure that out. We are all sinners saved by grace. We are all, right? It, it says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It also tells us in God's word that we all fall short of God's glorious ideal. So if we are called then by God to be holy as he is holy, we should be striving for that. But this person who I thought was surely in mind and as holy as God is holy, well, yet only God knows my heart. In other words, he was admitting to me that there are still shortcomings, right? There are still maybe character defects. There are still things in his life where he finds or feels that maybe are not in line with God's will. So all men, right, come up short. But God does not. Because God is not a man that he should not. Knowing this, should help us trust. <coughs> I wish my eyes were better. This is the message that Balaam delivered. Rise up, Balak, and listen to me, O son of Zephyr. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He's not a human, so he doesn't change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it out, carried it through? Listen, I received a command to bless, and God has blessed, and I cannot reverse that. No misfortune is in his plan for Jacob. No trouble is in store for Israel. For the Lord their God is with them. He has been proclaimed their king. God brought them out of Egypt, so for them he is as strong as a wild ox. No one can touch Jacob. No magic has, ever, has power against Israel. For now it will be said to Jacob, what wonders God has done for Israel. These people rise up like lions like a majestic lion, lion. <coughs> Rousey.
housing itself. They refused to test until they feasted on prey. Rest until they feasted on prey. Drinking the blood of the slaughter. From Balak to Balaam, fine. But if you won't curse them, at least don't bless them. But Balaam replied to Balak, didn't I tell you that I can do only that which God tells me to do? God is not a man. He is not human that he could take back a promise. What his word says is truth, and it's that which we can believe. There is no lying in God. It would be impossible for him to lie. He is not a human that he should change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and failed to carry it through? Okay. Here we go. Another devotional. And it's on step what? Three. Step three. We made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. It is not uncommon to link our perceptions about God to our childhood experiences with people who played powerful roles in our life. If we have been victimized in the past by people who were capricious, abusive, distant, uncaring, or incompetent, we may now anticipate their qualities in God. Just because God is a power greater than we are, and people, the people who victimized us represented a power greater than we were, we must not conclude that God will harm us if we entrust our life to him. Jesus tells us that he did entrust himself. Let me get back here. Jesus tells us he didn't entrust himself to men because he knew what was in their hearts. Nevertheless, he voluntarily turned his life over to the will of God the Father. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than trust in people. And that's Psalm 118, verse 8, which is exactly the center of the Bible, just so you know. It's the verse in the center of the Bible. So I... I, I for some reason, think of it as more important than others because of that, but I think of it more important than others because it tells us truth. That we should put our trust in God above everything else. We may have learned in the past that putting confidence in people brings only pain and disappointment. We can't let this keep us from ever trusting again. In working through step three, we can make a healthy decision to turn our will and our life over to the only one who is worthy of being trusted. The Bible tells us God is not a man so that he, he, so he does not lie. He is not a human so he does not change his mind. He does not change his mind. And God said this, I will never fail you. I will never forsake you. Which is found in Hebrews 13.5. We know that we can't make it all alone. But now we can stop being the victim. We can turn our life over to someone who is really able to care for our needs. Submission of self. Surrender. And acceptance of God's will. So, I underline that sentence because it is truth. And because it's important. It's important. Until we learn to trust, we are victimizing ourselves. In order to trust someone, we have to first trust God with our lives. One of the things I'm happy on that prayer board is always there is prayer for my wife and myself. Because I am always in prayer for my leaders. So that God, and I trust God, and I say, God, please give them the direction, the instructions that they need to guide me. 
So I appreciate the fact that my wife and myself and the staff are on the prayer board. Because you need to be praying to God for us. Because we're in a position to give you instruction. And if it's not coming from God, it's not the right direction. Now, I always pray for myself that God will give me what I need to help you. But you should be praying too, because that way it'll help you believe then that what you hear, especially right here, right now in this chapel, is not from me, but from God. You get what I'm saying? It's the same thing that we should do when you're looking for a sponsor. You're looking for somebody that's going to help you and give you direction. And they too then need to be in line with God's word and God's will. If not, we become victims of our own mistrust. And the mistrust must change. By asking God for faith in Him, we learn to trust. Once we've learned to trust God, we can ask Him to help us with our trust in others. By trusting God, we can learn ourselves, we can trust ourselves and others. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word this morning, Lord, because we need it. Help us to believe the words that we read, and I mean, we can comprehend their meaning, but they're not just words. They're instruction that comes directly from you. They're information that we need so that our understanding of you will grow. So first, Lord, give us the faith to believe in you. Give us the faith that we need, even if it's small, Lord, that our understanding is small. Help us, Father. Right now, as we are in prayer, Lord, to ask you to meet our needs. First and foremost, Lord, we can't hold on to our past. You've made it possible for us to be forgiven. The shame can be lifted. All that stuff that we've pushed down for fear that someone might find out. You know. You've made it possible for us to come to you and admit our sin and seek forgiveness through your Son, Christ Jesus. So help us now, Father. Help us. Give us the courage to be obedient. Help us to trust you with our lives. We come to you seeking forgiveness through Christ Jesus. We accept Christ into our hearts as our personal Savior. We repent of our sin, of our past, and we never want to go back, Lord. And I thank you, Father, that by doing this, by accepting Christ into our hearts, you lift us up out of that muck and that mire and you set us on a firm foundation. We have a fresh start. We are a new creation in Christ. But here we are in this world. We're still breathing here. There's still temptation all around us. We still have the same brain, Lord, that will tell us things that we know aren't true in our heart. Tell us, Lord, that it's okay to still carry out and do certain things, Father. Help us as you speak to us about these things, Father. If there's something that we're dealing with today, Lord, that we're still working on, and we know you're calling us to, to leave that behind, take it from us. Help us. <coughs> Lord, this morning I pray that each person here, that you put someone in their lives that they can trust and that will not betray them. We need each other. We need to be able to trust each other. But first, we need to trust you above all things, above all else. 
So I thank you, Father, for speaking to us about that. And I thank you, Father, for being here with us. Just help us, Lord, this morning. Help us, Father, to be in line with your will this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.